Hey Realm Walkers, welcome back to the channel. So today what we're going to do is 10 rapid fire tips for those of us that might just be getting started. I plan to make this a series where we go a little more in depth on some of the things we're going to talk about today. Um, but for now we are on our test character in our test realm that I use to kind of prepare us for our episodes in the Let's Play. Alright, so I'm going to jump right into it. We're going to head out and I'm going to do the first tip for us. Tip number one, hold E to auto pick up things that you have harvested. So we are not far from Test Castle. Uh, we chopped down some logs, hold E. Those are going to float to our inventory. We also killed some bound here on this little point of interest. And anything that you see glowing on the ground as a resource, if you hold E, it will auto fly to your inventory. None of that tappy, 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 like you do to harvest things, you know, that are planted. Um, out while you're in the wild. You can just hold E and they will magically float to you via fey magic. All right, on to tip number two. Tip number two is pretty straightforward. Um, it's in most games, uh, on PC at least nowadays, but you do have an auto run feature. By default, the mappings are numlock. All right, you can hit numlock again to turn it off, or you can just stop with WASD. And then caps lock is also your secondary option for auto run. Now while you are auto running, you can tap shift, and this is what I enjoy, you get auto sprint. So you your character will sprint to its heart's content or as long as that stamina bar will let it. This is very helpful in deserts where you have a long track to walk from one point of interest to the other. All right, that is it for tip number two. I'm going to take you guys on for tip number three. All right, we are back at base for tip number three and tip number four. So tip number three is you can stack three active timed food buffs on top of each other. So if ever you're going into combat or you want to make sure that you have the most resources possible, stamina and food wise, make sure you're utilizing all three of your food buffs, not just the first one that you see over there on the bottom left next to our hunger meter. Number seven is the food that we currently have active. If you see our health is 393, we're going to go ahead and stack this second meat item on top of it. That's going to chunk our health up just a bit and it see it has its own separate timer and then on number nine we're going to drink some nectar bottoms up nectar by the way is super powerful um and that's going to have all three active at the exact same time we're going to get a ton of health and everything on top of it it is 100 percent worth it now the second tip i'm going to show you guys is if you open your inventory you can either hit i or the tab key to do so Make sure that if ever you're not sure like what a buff is or what a card is doing, you go in and you actually check the buffs. It doesn't explain this to you in the tutorial that I remember, but you can mouse over any active status effects that you currently have. So over here we have our relaxed buff, right? You can pause to read if you would like. We also have a buff from being sheltered. And then we have a debuff, these show in red. And this is because we are currently tired. So your eyelids droop and your muscles ache. You won't be able to push on much longer without rest. So basically what this means is our stamina, if you watch it, is going to actively be reduced. And then it'll get to the point where we don't even have enough stamina to swing our weapons. So make sure when you get that debuff, you go ahead and sleep. Short rest during the day, long rest at night. All right, on for tip number five. Tip number five is having a chest located right outside of your estate cairn. And the reason for that is if ever you were out in the wild and you become over encumbered because you know you're out there getting those good resources you can always fast travel home by clicking travel to respite all right and then if you have a chest right here outside of the cairn you can just drop these resources instead of having to slow walk them all the way inside to your storage area you just go ahead and drop them over right click to auto transfer to a new container um extra tip in there for you guys um, and then you can hold X and then R to move. And you can just bring it right into your storage area, plop it down and then transfer those resources. And that'll take us to tip number six. All right, so tip number six is build menu. So by default, we all, at least I think a lot of us, assume that the build menu was whenever you hit B because this is what you're first introduced to to build your first campfire, right? So this is a build menu, but it's only a one part of a two part system. The second build menu is by hitting X. It's what we did out there to move the chest. And it, if you notice down there, it changes our HUD. It'll show us our structure limits. It'll show us our uh, control abilities via copy, move or remove. 
And then I'm just going to kind of show you guys what it looks like to use those, right? So if we wanted to say copy this refined workbench, we just hit Q and it's going to copy that blueprint and we can plop it down anywhere. On a blueprint, hold E and you can deconstruct. Now, speaking of deconstruction, um, we may want to say break down a bench, but we want all of the resources it took to create that bench, right? So I could, I've already done it, I could hit it with an ax and I'm gonna get some resources back, right? But I can also hit V, oh shoot, that was wrong key. I can hit V and I'm gonna get all of my resources back, right? And then if I wanted to, right? If I needed to rebuild it for whatever reason, I just pop up over here, simple workbench, and then place it back down, okay? And then the next one is move. Now move can be a little tricky if you're not used to the system. So you would think that since I hit R and can move anything else, right, that I would then be able to hit R and move this bench, but I can't, why is that? So anytime you have something on top of a station or a surface of any sort, you're gonna have to remove what's connected to it in order to move it. So if I were to move this candle, say, to this workbench and this augmentation over here on the floor, then I can move my bench you know, wherever I need to. Doesn't matter, just like the chest, right? So we're gonna go ahead and put it back and then put our things back on top of it. There we go. And we can leave the candle there for now. But that is tips on the build menu. So removing and moving and copying. For tip number seven, we are going to teach you guys a little something something about fairy rings. What fairy rings are? You unlock these around about the time that you unlock the crude portal, which allows you to make your own portals. But fairy rings are personalized respawn points. So if ever you're going to do a dungeon or you know you're about to fight a hard boss and you don't want to have to run a mile to get back to your stuff, you just plop it down and build it. And there we go. Has a beautiful little effect. And then um, once you actually die, you'll respawn here, hopefully closer than where your initial spawn point is, and be able to grab your stuff a bit easier. I'm going to uh, sacrifice myself and show you guys how it works. All right, so we are coming up on an automaton bishop right now. These guys pack one hell of a punch. I'm purposely gonna let it kill us so you guys can see exactly how this fairy ring works. So this is our respawn screen. And now we are here right on top of our fairy ring. So when we die, of course, we do lose everything that was in our inventory, except what we had equipped or on our hot bar. So we're just gonna run back over here and grab it. And that's the end of this tip. Tip number eight, weapon damage types. So for larger animals like this elephant here, or perhaps a hippo in the swamp, you want to use piercing damage. So for that, we're looking at the small knife. The next weapon damage type is blunt damage. This is great for automatons, and the first weapon that I got that I love that deals this damage type is the maul. And last but not least, we have slashing. And we're gonna kill a couple wolves, just so you can see they are indeed weak to slashing. All right, on to the next tip. And we're back at Test Castle for the last two tips of today's video. Tip number nine, how to set the difficulty for your realms. So on any portal that will open you up to a new realm, you just interact with it, either the portal itself or the card reader, and you enter your biome card and your major card. And over on the left-hand side is where you have your realm settings. So you can use the drop down. You can go from easy all the way up to extreme. We're gonna set it to hard real quick and reopen this portal. And that carries us into the last tip for today's video. Tip number 10, how to re-roll a realm. All right, so what I'm gonna do is pop in here and show you guys what we're working with with the current realm and then what it looks like to re-roll it. Here we are in our first forest antiquarian realm before we do the reset. We're in the middle of a forest. We have Aurelio, our NPC here. I picked this realm because he's always right outside the portal. If we look at the map, we've explored some things. So we have points of interest highlighted. The Fey Tower is down here, but not done. And just remember this general layout, right? Okay, I'm gonna hop back to Test Castle and we're gonna reset the realm. All right, we're back. And what we're gonna do is go ahead and interact with the portal here and see we already have it open. We're gonna click reset down here at the bottom to completely reset it. But that is not how you reset the biome itself. So if we were to put a forest again and an antiquarian again, 
it's just going to reopen the portal to where we were. What you have to do is over here on the bottom left, click that reset button, open the portal, and you are good to go. We're going to get a brand new realm. I'll pop in there to show it to you guys, and then we're going to wrap up the video. All right, guys, here we are in a brand new forest antiquarian realm. If you can tell, looking around us, we are still in a forest. It has the same color scheme, but it's just a bit different. And then if we open up the map, you can see it is brand new. We have procedurally generated a brand new place to explore, new points of interest to find, and everything else. And with that, I hope these tips were helpful for you guys today, and we'll call that a video. If there's anything we did not cover and you would like to see, feel free to leave it down in the comments, and we'll see about getting a video spun up for it. Thank you guys. Sage out.